I created Species Nutrition with one mission in mind, to provide bodybuilders and serious athletes with no-nonsense supplements that work. I put my name and reputation on every bottle of Species Nutrition products. If you want to be your absolute best, join the evolution. Happy St. Patty's Day, everyone out there in RX Muscle Land. Uh, this is Heavy Muscle Radio. I'm Dave Palumbo, joined, as always, by the technician, Chris Aceto. And, Chris, we had a very successful Arnold Classic UK weekend. So that was two, uh, two weekends in succession. Within two weeks, we two shows. And same results. Hadi Shupin winning. The out of. A lot of people thought Samson looked a lot better. Agree or disagree? Um, I thought he looked, um, different and I think better, I think it's better. Um, I'm still on the fence. You know what, you know why you're on I the fence? You know what, I think it's better because, uh, I think at the end of the day, he was quote smaller here, but better. And because you think he looks smaller? I mean, he was lighter. Okay. I'll take you know, that. and I, I think I figured out what, if you, he has to have, the, the midsection has to look right. And what I mean by that is at this show, it seemed like the midsection was drier and smaller. And he's narrow in the hips, which is incredibly important to have when you're bodybuilding because. Even if you if you're narrow in the hips, even if you don't have big legs, it makes your sweep look huge. So it exaggerated his his sweep, and I think the exaggerated sweep on the quads with the tighter midsection made both three things look different and better: standing relaxed, front double, and front last spread. So, what do you think he did differently? If you had a guess. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, you know, I, no idea. You know, I, I thought that, I, you know, I, I, Oh, what would, you know what? Someone asked me when I did the uh, post game show, what, what we were doing the, uh, the play by play, what would I have done with Samson after the Arnold USA had, I was working with him and I said, I would have just had him on that fucking cardio piece of equipment yeah. for two and a half hours a day, probably, you know, just on protein and vegetables. I mean, do you think that's what he did? And that's why he tightened up a lot? Yeah, I mean that you can't miss with that, you know, because when you're when you're a big guy and you're round, he's super round. Yeah, you know, you can do no carbs and do a ton of cardio, and it's only effective. You know, if you're if you're not that big, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna waste you away and just flatten you out. So, right. um, it was a you know it was a lot cleaner look through like the midsection, right? Um, and it had a cleaner look through. I think that's the key word. Had a cleaner look on the side shots, like through the, through the hamstring and glued on the side, which I right. think he needs to have. Um, yeah. And and that just accentuated the pleasing pleasingness of his physique. You know, just make made it look um, like it his physique was put together better than when it's you know bigger. I think, for example, like at the Olympia, remember at the Olympia, I said, don't be surprised if he wins because, yeah. I, you know, we're, I was looking at his just, he was gigantic, you know. Right. Um, I wanted to make but, a comparison. But, but for the, sweet spot, Dave, the sweet spot is somewhere between those two looks. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's somewhere between. Still, don't you think he could still be leaner? Um, a little bit. A little bit. Yeah, I mean, anyone can be leaner except Hadi. So, yes, he could be leaner. That's right. That's my new no. answer. Anyone can be leaner except Hottie. I, I, what I want to And Andreas Munzer. And Andreas Munzer, Munzer, too. We'll probably win this show anyway, Munzer. Yeah. I sent you all those pictures, David. You never yeah. put them up. I know. You, 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 he was crazy looking. That's why. 
you know, I wanted to make a comparison because I remember there was one year, and I, maybe you can tell me which year it was. I don't know if it was 16, where Roden came in bigger. And he had this little bit of like his lower gut was like a little distended down there. And people were saying, oh, he ruined his midsection. Obviously, the next year he came back, he was great. But um, you think that's what happened to Samson? I mean, and what, what went wrong with Roden that year that he looked a little almost too big for himself? Well, he should have won that year, 15. I, 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 I you know, hang on to that to this day, so, simply because if you go back and do our wrap-ups, ours... Wasn't like, it 16, though, that he looked a little no, 15, too big? 15, 15, 15. He was gargantuan. Oh, okay. He was gargantuan, um, and he had some distension going on. But it's like, it's it's like saying... But, but the irony at that point is you're talking about the guy with the... It, it's like saying... Um, you know, we've seen Dorian's back better. Well, he's still got the back, best back on, right, on the right. end. You know, oh, Rogan's got distension. Well, he's, he's still got the best midsection on the stage. Right. He had the best absent thighs by like 10 miles in 2000. Yep. Best frontal bicep by 10 miles in that show. So what, what, I'm, what I'm saying is, so did you you just brought him down a little smaller the, the following year? What was the, what, in other words, what did you no, change? The, on the, him? No, no. Uh, 16 the next year he was he was smaller but he wasn't as good as 15 he was just smaller because he had um uh stomach issues the whole entire 10 days oh that's old. when he had the uh that's when he had the uh also that, right that's when i carved them on donuts for the 2016 olympia <laughs> 2016 olympia he only ate donuts to carve up on because they were i'm dead serious because everything was like ripping through his stomach like right. if you give him a potato or rice or protein um, right. And then 17, he had the jaw, broken jaw, so he was off in 18, you know, was right. the way. So, you know, the, it, you know it's Dave for, for bodybuilding aficionados who really like that stuff. 15, I thought he won. 16, he had a lot of stomach issues. 17, he had the jaw issue. The real comeback after 15 was 18. Right. He didn't have a prep until 18. So you, you can't count 16 because when – you know, if you can't eat for two weeks before the Olympia, you're in trouble. Mm -hmm. That's 16. 17, the jaw was screwed shut for like six months, three months. Yeah, he broke his jaw, all right. And then 18 was the win. That's right. So the real, the you know, his best look was 15, throw out 16, throw out 17, because he couldn't even prepare for those shows. 18, he was really good. I thought he looked really good in 18. I thought he was 18, great. 18, he won. Yeah, 18, he won. He, I'm was saying he, looked, he looked really good, though, too, at 18. You know? Yeah, he was downsized from 15. But he's still big. He's big enough to win. What is Lee Priest saying here? <laughs> oh, the tape on the thing? He wants you to move to your left a little so that you cover the tape up with your head. Lee, I don't have time to like. <laughs> Lee, you're the best. I got pulled over last week, Lee, for my car registration being out. To the, the police, I said, you know what? Why is your registration and your registration's not good? Your what's the other? Your sticker's not good. I don't know. In Florida, like, you, do, you have, do you have car insurance at least? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that I do have because the bill comes in the mail. The other ones you have to proactively go out. And I was gonna so, say, I, 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 you, you don't, do you, you don't have automatic web payment right now? Not in Maine, not for registration. They don't have it for registration. You have to go. You, you no can one. go on the website though and do it, right? I don't have time to that. Either. I told the police officer. No, I don't have time people, no. I, the reason I'm saying is people don't know you actually write physical checks out still, right? Absolutely, I do. Sign <laughs> Chris has got one of those big checkbooks, and he's still signing checks. You know, Listen, like, Dave, I, I'll, I'll send it to you. Actually, I can't now, but. Someone, you'll love this. <laughs> Someone sent me a rent, and they they wrote the the amount due. Right. They're they're, they're a scammer. They yeah. wrote what it was due, like fourteen fifty, in the the amount, and then they wrote it out for fourteen hundred. So the bank gave me the right the fourteen hundred, the lower number. Oh my god. Oh no, they wrote it out for a thousand. They wrote it out for a thousand. I was going to send it to you. They pulled a fast one on you. Yeah. 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 Blackman used to do that too. He, yeah, he was like, I, I don't have time to sign the checks. I don't have time. <laughs> I don't have time. <laughs> you know, I put this little graphic up from uh, one of the Instagrams, the Suluisa Instagram. But, you know, I don't know who, I mean, and maybe you can tell me, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't know who could have possibly have thought that the uh, scorecards 
were any different than what they were. I mean, Hottie won in prejudging the night show. Did you think that that was even controversial? No, I, I thought I thought he looked um, yeah. better, a little bit better in prejudging. But I mean, you're, you're cutting hairs, right? Or whatever. I don't, yeah, I don't know what people are even complaining about. I mean, it, no, when, it he, when, he, when, he came, when he came out and he stood in prejudging, he stands with the vacuum, then he sits on the abs, and it's right. just like game over. Well, he's very short and very wide. And when you're wide and short and you get full legs, he might have the, you know what, Dave? He has the biggest adductors in the sport. Which makes his legs look really thick. They make him look so full. And uh, he, you know what? Only his physique. He stands too wide, but it works for him. And he sits on his abs and most people sit on sit on their abs. They look shallow up front. Up, you know, they don't have the the width up top. That's why you know you tell someone stand big. So that, why? So you can look big to the judges. He is yeah. the only guy, him and Brandon Curry, who can sit on their abs. Yeah. And look wide up top. Because exactly. the judge wants right. to see the midsection, right? They, you know, yeah. you, you judge. You want to see like, okay, are they in condition? They got leg separation. They got, you know, what's their midsection look like? It's a telltale sign for being in condition. And his midsection is fantastic, but he can sit on his abs. Where a lot of people, when they sit on their abs, they just end up making themselves look small. So you, you know, right out of the gate, stand and relax. He's already like two points ahead, three points ahead, four, whatever. Yeah. Are we getting to that point though? With Hottie is becoming so dominant that now that people are rooting against him now, like to try yeah. to see if you can knock yeah. him off. Yeah, yeah. People start picking him apart after. The, I, uh, I'm the opposite. I. <laughs> <laughs> I was a big Samson fan. And, you know, I was like, I was kind of not, you know, a big, huge fan of him. But I became a better fan when I saw how how grainy he was able to get at the Arnold Classic in person. And it totally, you know, I, it showed me another level that he was able to go to that we hadn't seen. Because he wasn't that lean at the Olympia as he was at the Arnold. If he brings this to the Olympia, the question is, does it? can anyone beat this guy who's in the lineup at this point? Um, you know, he probably scares a lot of people in the lineup, you know, and you know, who's competing. I mean, can anyone beat him? I mean, I, in, your, I, in your mind. Yeah, people can beat him. Who? Uh, Derek has beat him. So Derek can beat him. Right. I think, um, I think depending on how his off season goes and stuff, I think, uh, Andrew Jack can beat him. I think a um, technically Samson, Samson could be right here. Still the the anomalies in the lineup, who because of their frame can make improvements and make a big impact on a bigger impact than they actually. The numbers will translate like like if it shows up on stage. So if if, if if other people improve, you know, you'll see the improvement on stage. But I think with those two, because of the height structure and so forth, you know, a little bit of improvement goes a long way. And a lot of improvement goes a super long way. Having said that, their work is cut out for them, for sure, because Hadi has proven himself from day one to be uh, the most conditioned guy in the sport. Uh, how many years straight? Since the day... He you know, he's like Dexter Jackson. He's so consistent, this guy. Well, he's you know, he's probably he's probably yeah, he's even more yeah. He's definitely I, I want to put you on the spot because I because this is a very difficult question for you to answer because if the way if, if you answer it one way, you're gonna get someone texting you. <laughs> if you answer it another way, you know, maybe not. Who wins at their best? Hottie Schupin, Dexter Jackson. Um, I was yeah. trying to think about that myself. I, I couldn't come up with an answer. Well, you have you have to figure out. You know what the problem is? They both have. You know, I, I guess we can just take Cardi and say his best was at the Arnold, like let's say two weeks ago. I think. Right. Right. So remove that, and then Dexter, you got to go through like seriously, like eleven different. Yes. Yeah. Um, to be able to figure out, you know, how he could 
you know, where he would stand on that. Um, I think that Dexter could beat him, stand and relax from behind at his best. Yeah. Um, I think Dexter I could just... on the back double, but not the back lat. I think Dexter could win these side chests. They, they both have weak side triceps. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think Hadi probably stand and relax in the lineup might be. Abzai? Hadi's probably better, right? Yeah. yeah. Abzai, Hadi. Who's um, most muscular? Dexter at his best. Yeah. Yeah. I think Dexter too. Um, be a great, be a great. Uh, front, front double, I think that maybe. Dexter at his best. Um, when Dexter won the Olympia, he, who did he beat aside from Jay? Who was else in that lineup? Um, I'm trying I to think. Know. Gustavo? I think Dexter's best might have been one of his Arnold wins when he's younger. He like his yeah. first Arnold. Right, but I'm just saying he beat guys like Gustavo Bedell. Who would Gustavo beat Hadi? At I his think best, that, right? I think Gustavo at his best is very comparable with Hadi. Yeah, not I, 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 he definitely. Right. Front last word, forget it. Gustavo yeah. was um, at his best. Side chest, side tricep, front double, front last spread was outstanding, outstanding. And he had the same type of abs as a, as a hottie, you know. What's that? He had the same type of abs as hottie, uh, Gustavo. Yeah, he, he's like a, yeah. Gustavo turn, your, was, turn the volume down a little on your end. I think I'm hearing myself. Uh, I don't know how to turn the volume down, dude. I'll just keep <laughs> going. You're the best, Chris. I love you, man. I really love you. <laughs> How's the Mercedes running these days? What's that? How's your Mercedes running these days? It's 30 years old. It's running great. <laughs> you haven't taken it? You haven't had to pull it no, into I the shop? The, no, I'll give you a comparison. I got to take the Infinity back into the shop this week. <laughs> uh, you know what, dude? buy new stuff and you know what you go i'm a landlord and refrigerators and dishwashers last 18 months to two years yeah they're terrible. They break. unless they're like from 1980 then they last forever and uh my as you know my mother passed away a couple of weeks ago and on her front porch i took toys toys that were mine from 57 when I was little. <laughs> All the nieces and nephews played with those toys. They're, you could take a uh, the Fisher Price toys. <laughs> they're unbreakable. This, yeah, I was going to say, they're still, uh, they're still perfect. I went, I went to Target the other day to buy my four year old who just turned five mm -hmm. uh, a Bumblebee Transformer. And <laughs> It's made out of nothing. And when I went to the checkout, they asked me if I would like to buy the warranty on it. A toy. First, well, I got it as a car, David. It's, th it's $39. Yeah. And, and, the, and, the, and, the, uh, and the, the insurance on it, it's like $20. That's the funny yeah. thing. And so I'm, I'm, I'm bringing a toy from 52 years ago. So my Mercedes, yeah. knock on wood, you know, I, I put like peanuts into it. I change oil, get new tires and new brakes, and the Infinity, just like when I had a Navigator, it's like every six months, oh, this is broken, this is broken, this is broken. Right. Right. <laughs> Unbelievable. Now, let's talk about the classic physique. Wesley Visser repeats again, obviously, and yeah. Breon really- We don't, we don't get to talk about uh, Akeem? Oh, well, I was, yeah, all right. I was just going to, all right, yeah, okay, let's go. Yeah. I was going to go back and forth, but let's. All right, okay, let's no, finish. you're the host. You're, you're like Richard Dawson. No, no, I, I'm yeah, going to go back. But let, you're right. Let's finish. Let's finish. Because Akeem, I was very, it was very weird because when Akeem got called out in the very first call out of the prejudging, he was like, he wasn't in the top four call out. And they had James Hollingshead there, which I thought was really kind of weird. And after prejudging, I guess he moved up a little because he, he finished in the fourth position, I guess, behind John De La Rosa, who was third. And then it flip flopped for the night show, but I guess Akeem had enough points to just edge out John. Um, did you think it was close between the two of them? I mean, I know you worked with Akeem, but I mean, I, I, I it was amazing at the show too. I didn't when they when they compared them, you know, next to each other at the end. I thought it was a slam dunk. Okay. 
And I think, John Rosa, by the way, I think John Della Rosa looked unbelievable for this show in the last show. And um, yeah, I thought this is this show I thought was John's all time best. 100 percent. Yeah. Like from every angle to confidence to, uh, you know, roundness, fullness, condition. He finally nailed his conditioning because he's, he's oh. always had trouble with that, you know. He he nailed he he was really really good in Ohio, but he nailed the condition super like on the money here. For a guy that's not that tall, he has a very small waist and he has ridiculously wide shoulders, and I'm sure that's what Gruskin saw in him all those years ago, even when he weighed 130 pounds, you know, whatever he was. Yeah, yeah he he's um he he's he's short and it doesn't hurt him on stage. No. Oh. No, especially when you're standing next to Hottie, who's not very tall either, you know? Yeah. yeah. I thought he had one of the best back double biceps on Me stage. Too, he might have had the best, you know? Yeah, I thought it was completely lights out. Yeah, I mean, he's he's so he's wide. Great. Yeah, he's so wide with a super V taper and, and a he's lot got of great back. Yeah, his back goes right down to his lower, you know, to his waist there. He's got a really good back. He's yeah. got, he doesn't really have, you know, it's hard to pick him apart, which is no. why you know, why in condition, like he is at any show, he's going to be uh, super dangerous. Very, you know, yeah. He's going to beat a lot of people just because there's not many gaps in the physique and it flows and the condition is spot, spot on. Yeah. It's going to be, you know, it's a great, it's a great two weeks for him because, you know, Super great place. It's good call outs, you know, great condition. Where does that put him in the in the Olympia shuffle in your mind? Uh the Olympia shuffle, I don't know. He'll be shuffling somewhere, but um, you know, it remains to be seen because there's just so many factors that can go into the Olympia. Just you know, take out there's just so many there's there's unknowns that we won't know till we see people win shows coming up and then we decide like gosh where are they going to place him how's this guy going to do how's right. that guy gonna do? it's still early in the season you know yep now let's talk akeem williams you know you helped him i helped him early in his career obviously we know he's got tremendous gifts i thought this was the best look i've ever seen um he was sliced but his back looked good for the first time sometimes he comes in and he's really lean and he's full but it's just for some reason his back doesn't have enough detail and it this time around it did what 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 did you do what do you think uh, helped him with that um i just think between you know just the hard diet and um i think really just hard dieting like got into a good rhythm and burned some of the fat off you know, yeah. where he holds it in the back. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. What was the know, trick with it? Did you, know, you have to rotate the, the, the carbs around or you just kept no, them low? No, I kept them I kept them low pretty much the whole yeah. time. Kept them gotcha. pretty, pretty low carbs. And, you know, I wouldn't say tortured them, but, you know, yeah. it wasn't easy. Yeah. And the funny thing is he looks full as a house here. You probably, I bet you didn't even carve him up on that much either. No, nobody. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy, right? No, I didn't. I didn't. Yeah. No. You know, a lot a lot of people I know, Kamali said it, and I agreed with him. He's starting to get that Orville Burke look to his physique, you know, with these, just because he's got the real high lats, but they're, like, freaky looking, for, especially in the front, you know. Yeah, they look like an airplane. <laughs> exactly. Right. <laughs> high How, lats don't work on one unless you have a tiny, you know, small, small waist, and he has a small waist yeah. and small hips. Yeah, and he always has. That's I love when people say squatting makes your waist a lot, you know, bigger. And the guy squats like seven hundred pounds for reps, you know. Yeah, exactly. Deadlifts nine, squats seven. <laughs> no angles, Dave. Only no. one. No. <laughs> you, you you broke up there for a second. What'd you say? Only what? Only one angle. Yes, that's right. No angles. <laughs> How far do you think he can move up at the Olympia this year? Um. I don't know, but I honestly think that um, I I believe that if he can get his back super tight, that 
that he could be in the first call out. Yeah. Um, and I think that, you know, I, I haven't been at these shows, you know, the, the Arnold was like a wash for me. I can't even remember what went on. Uh, right. yeah, but um, I, I, th oh, I, I think in terms of judging, you know, he was, he was left out of the first call out, of course, in Ohio. Um, and, and and the first call out in in the yeah, UK yeah, too, and I think you know I'm not there, but I I think they probably I'm guessing, you know, they're looking for how he looks in the back, because you know you can't not be in the first call out looking like him unless you they're looking at the weakness and the weakness is the back of course so. And I think both days, you know, he tightened up for like the finals. And I think where the tightness shows up is in the back. You know what I mean? Right. So if you're a judge, you say like, okay, well, this is like first call out material when you're tight in your weakest area. Just think of it this way. No matter who you are in, a, in, in this, in a big lineup, if you're like, if your weakness is your glutes and they're just not there, but everything else looks dynamite, mm -hmm. you know, most judges are looking for the complete package. And part of the complete package is a prerequisite is glutes. So you might get lost, you know, lost in the shuffle. Right. But if you come in with the glutes, you know, whether it be the next day, then, you know, you get to move up. So but I, I do think believe, I, I do believe the answer is I do believe, um, you know, a, a tighter back. Yeah, I think John I think, has him in the shot. John beats him in the shot because of yeah, that back. Yeah, does. he beats him in the back double. You know, this is the first Arnold I can really remember that I, I think everyone in the top five was was shredded. I mean, I mean, you could say it's going to be a little bit harder, but I mean, everyone else was really at their best. Hottie, Akeem, John, Hollingshead. So. That, that that's I guess good for the sport, right? We're seeing guys showing up now in, in the best shape of their life, and that made I think that's what made the show so interesting because we're well, getting I guys that, that are. I, I think that's I, I think that's what made the show interesting two weeks ago too. Yeah. Is that people are coming in, you know, at their best for sure. Yeah, and you know, it's it's exciting for for you know fans, of course, but it's also you know exciting for the judges because you know whatever preconceived idea you might have, for example, like running into the Arnold. Okay, Del Rosa, you think you know what Del Rosa is going to look like. You think you know like what Akeem's going to look like. Of course, you, you know what's you know what Hottie's going to look like and he delivers on it. But, you know, you, there might be some ho-hum, you know, if you're a judge with, yeah, I know what uh, so-and-so looks like, Akeem or John, and then they over-deliver. You know, it makes it to be an exciting competition even for a judge to like you know you have to like cut fine hairs in terms of trying to figure out who's in the third fourth fifth sixth spots mm -hmm. 100 i agree all right let's uh let's talk classic uh, wesley Bissers obviously winning two weeks in a row Obviously, I guess cementing himself as one of the guys to watch out for coming. Yeah. You know, the other thing you have to consider is that Brian Anthony moved up. And a lot of people thought he could. I, I actually thought that he had the show one, to be honest with you. And you can give me your opinion in a second. But that moves Brian also back into the, you know, the equation. So we have like a four-man classic physique, you know, Olympia really battle coming up with between. And it, we don't even know if his name's going to do it. C-Bum's going to do it. But obviously, Ramon, Urs, and Breon, you know, and Wesley now battling it out. And then if, if, if we throw Bumstead in there, then we have a, you know, a five-man race. It could be pretty exciting. Yeah, it's going to be a tremendous show. The Olympia is going to be unbelievable open, unbelievable classic, unbelievable everything, you know. Um, yeah, I, I thought, uh, I thought Breon looked fantastic. Um I thought he would just look had more pop to his muscle. His legs look better. His back double is like Sean Ray's. You know, it's it's got uh, pops everywhere. I thought Wesley looked you know fantastic. 
Um, at first I thought, Breon, you know, when I was looking, flipping through pictures, which is not the real world, the pic pictures are not the real world, and video isn't either, actually. Um, but flipping through pictures to get an idea, I thought Breon improved a lot from two weeks ago, even though I thought he looked great two weeks ago. Uh, I thought he improved, and I thought um, Wesley was a little bit better two weeks ago. I thought he was a little bit more dialed out a couple couple weeks ago. Um, fuller, I think, yeah. So it seemed close to me. You know, it seemed close. I didn't really check the judging scores, but I, I think that we're – you know, Wesley is has an advantage is that up top he's, you know, big shoulders, big big arms, big width, big height. You know, that might sway some people. He's got some powerful shots, I think, you know. That's you can't neglect that. Especially yeah. the you know, he's, he is so tall. I mean he's he's a lot taller than Ramon and a lot taller than Bumstead too. What is he about? Yeah. I, yeah, yeah, no, he's he's very very tall, and we know how that helped that worked to Bumstead's advantage. So yeah. before Wesley didn't have the muscle. It seems like he's added enough muscle now that he's he's starting to you know dominate these guys, and he he looks huge on stage. I mean, it's yeah. almost like like how the hell does this guy make his the height the weight class for his height? But he's so tall that I guess he can weigh a lot more than these other guys. Yeah, yeah, the classic will be great because because he's he's he'll be a factor. Based on those attributes that you just mentioned, can he beat Bumstead? Um, can he beat Bumstead? You know me; I think everyone's beatable. Um, that's one. Right. Can he beat Bumstead? Um, does he have a better chance of beating Bumstead than, than Ramon does? Um. Thank you, John Scuderi. By the way, for the. Four ninety nine. You know, in a lot of people's eyes, they would say so. I don't think so, but I can see why yeah. people would say so because it would say he's going to be taller and wider than Bumstead. Yeah. Um, I mean, he's got weaknesses. They're not many. Right. You know, but um, you think we'll see Bumstead competing this this uh, fall, especially yeah. since his wife is yeah. due? You yeah. think we will? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Why do you think? Why are you so certain of that? Because uh, I think that, you know, have it, people have babies all the time. I mean, what's so big about having a baby? It it's, keeps you up at night. You know that better than anyone. Well, <laughs> you know, that's what mother-in-laws and, and, I mean, this is, this is your, this is your whole time. You speak very not, cautiously. Not, not not to be little, not to be little, not to be little. The importance of having a child, yeah. but this is your whole entire life. Um, I mean, I'm sure there's lots more aspects to Chris Bumstead than bodybuilding, but the fact of the matter is, it is your whole entire life, your whole entire success, your whole entire existence of success. There's lots of ways to measure success. I'm not talking about that. And I can give you a list of, you know, how I define a successful person. But in right. terms of, you know, how you became who you are, you know, um, it's through bodybuilding. So the idea of like, oh, we're having a kid, I'm taking the ear off, I'm retired, you know, that's like ludicrous. Yeah, I, I agree. But uh, especially because you're so fact, In fact, I'll tell you that, and, you know, if, you know, if he's on his A game mentally, which I'm sure he is because he's won every time, um, having a child will enhance your training and your drive and your, you know, desire to win. Full stop, period. So it won't be a negative. People think it's a negative who don't have a kid. But, and if you're a professional bodybuilder and you're having a kid, you might think of all the anxieties of like, oh, we've got to feed them, they're this, they're that, and all these things. And, but once the, you know, once the baby comes, I'm sure he'll say like, oh, you know, I'm I'm, I'm training for three of us now, not for just two of us. Right, right. What do you think of the uh, battle between um, Urs, who finished third, and second place, Brian Ansley? I mean, it was it was obviously close. 
Um, what How do you was like? It on the scorecards. What? How was it on the scorecards? I'm going to tell you the scorecards. The scorecards uh, gave Breon all second places except one judge. It seems they gave Urs a, a second, and then the rest of the, Urs got all third. You know, thirds from the rest. I, of the I personally have had Breon beating Urs since the last two Olympias. You didn't know why though. What do you, What do you like about him better? I, I think that his his uh, muscle he 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 beats him on muscle maturity. Yeah, he, that's for sure. He beats him on um, completeness. He beats him on uh, he beats him on the back double. He beats him on the front double. Those are two important shots. I mean, there's only in classic how many more? Two more. So you got you know you've got muscle maturity plus you're winning two shots. It's like automatic. Hmm. All right, I'll buy that. <clears throat> Although what I about? Thought, I thought Urs looked very good here too. So what? Yeah, I thought his conditioning was excellent. What? So why does why does Rion not beat Wesley? Um, I I think I think that I think you can make an argument for it. Um, I was not there. Based on what I see, you know, I, I would make an argument for it. Uh. I think that, like on the back double bicep, I think that more pops with Breon and the lower body. There's more popping. That's that's the weakness to uh, Wesley is the back shots. Like his legs look slender. Like he mm -hmm. leans on one leg and he he right he leans on the left leg. They're positioned kind of weird. He leans on one leg. They just look a little slender from behind. I, they think, look he, I think he needs a little more size on his legs. I th really, they're, I think they're conditioned. They're conditioned from the side too, like on the side yeah. chest, but they still look slender. Yeah, and nice. So in my mind, that's like a weakness. Okay, you know, I, I agree. I have to agree with you. Yeah, I and have to agree. The other thing is the other. So where he beats him is the height, the width, you know, the the the, the delts like stand and relax in the lineup. So that's where he beats him. Stand and relax in the lineup for sure. Um, but uh, yeah, I lost my train of thought there. No, I, I, I tend to agree with everything you said. I think that uh, Wesley's legs are his only real weakness, which is going to work to B Bumstead's advantage because Bumstead's got great legs. And that might be where he beats him. I think that uh, he could definitely, he might be better than Bumstead in his upper body. But I think he needs to bring those legs up. And if he can bring them up a pound or two by the Olympia, he might be very, very dangerous, you know? Yeah. yeah. And he, I'll tell you one thing Wesley does great. He's one of the best posers in that whole division, Absolutely. you know? And well, he knows his physique. To, to yeah, he knows his physique. Yeah. Right yes. All right, what, I wanted to ask you, because a lot of people have been asking, how come we didn't see this guy in the lineup in the U.K.? Because he's looking great, he posted this picture, good veto. He's going to be, I know, and well, he'll be at the Arnold Brazil, right? Arnold Brazil, yeah. yeah. But we didn't see him at the Arnold UK. It looks like he can compete to, tomorrow. The way you look in here. Yeah, um, you know, he's 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 you know when you when you're planning for one show or planning for a show, you know, yeah. you planning for a show. That's you know how it is in bodybuilding. You you know you competed, Dave. Obviously, you're, so you're notorious though. You're like Bob. Oh, maybe you should do the show this weekend. You know. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah Jump yeah. in. You can't anymore because if people listen to you and they do the show and then something happens. <laughs> right? It's also with the whole visa issues and traveling, and it's yeah. a pain. Yeah. Well, it, it's a it's a long it would be, it'd be like a long last minute. Right. Week. Just it's not like you go to New Jersey instead of New York, you know what I mean? Well, you're coming from Brazil too, so just to get to Florida, is right. A long right, right? Right. He looks great, though. I mean, this is this might be his best look to date. I hope he's uh, can br he brings that to the stage. Yeah. Well, I sent I sent you pictures too from. Yeah. No, I know. I I only posted this one because this one was online. Yeah. 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 I don't want to be. I don't want to upset the Brazilian fans and have them like storm the Bastille at my house here. Yeah. The, yeah. They may. They may. There's a lot of Brazilians in Florida. <laughs> Um, I love I love our Brazilian fans. I, I actually want to go to. I really wanted to go to the Brazil Arnold, but um, I, th I think I'll wait till next year. Oh, you should have gone. You'd have a great time. I know. I look. I've been there a lot before. I, I love Brazil, um, but 
you know, sometimes you, you got to plan those. You know what the problem with Brazil? You got to have a visa. And I had a, I had a, I had a visa that was good for ten years, and it expired last year. So I have to. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. People, are, you need a passport and a visa. I'm sure you know this because you've been there. Yeah. But it's only good for ten years, and that tells you how long we've been going to these shows. I, I got it in thirteen, and now it's expired. Twenty three. That means mine's expired. I think. No, no. I, I think I read. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Read I it? Yeah, it's, it's expired too. Yeah. You know, so. Maybe next year I'll have uh, all my ducks in order, as they say. But yeah, that's and I know Tamer's running that show down there, right? For the for the Arnold people, so that's yeah. Gonna be, yeah. yeah. I wonder if I'm, yeah, sure Arnold must be going right because he's oh yeah. Arnold's, Arnold's got the foot on the gas in promotions right now. Well, with those Brazilian fans too, that show will be packed out, guaranteed. Yeah, sold. For sure. especially yeah, especially with Arnold showing up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was great that Arnold showed up at the UK because I know he didn't. Sh he didn't. Well, he wasn't there last year, right? No, no, I don't yeah. think so. Oh, yeah, I I like this too. The, where they're putting these Arnold back to back to back, I think it's a brilliant idea. Yeah, me too. And if I were hottie, I would do the Brazil too. Why not? <laughs> I don't know, right? I mean, you might as well collect another paycheck. Who's going to beat him? What, what's he going to lose his condition? Right, the guy's never out of shape. It's unbelievable. Would he? Be, that would make him the only person to ever win three Arnolds in one year, probably. I know Dexter came close, to that, but I don't think he did it in a year. Yeah, but I don't think Dexter had to. Well, Dexter may have. He won like, didn't he do like South Africa one year? Did they have a South Africa Arnold? He, and a, he's won all the Arnolds, but I don't know if he did like multiple ones in. One, I don't know if he did like three in one year though. That that would have. To, I'd have to check with him on that one. Yeah. He yeah. probably has the most Arnold Classic victories though. Oh, he has to. Yeah. He broke Flex's record. I know that with the you know, with the USA, right? Then he get like five or six wins. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. Look, I I think they're doing a great job, and like I said, yeah, I think next to me come back for the five hundred Gs. <laughs> we gotta come up with a list of people most haven't thought about it. Yeah, maybe Kyle do it. He should come back. What's he doing? I interviewed him at the. Um, oh yeah, you told me you interviewed him. Yeah, in the Arnold Classic. Uh, you, you didn't have to go to a management firm or whatever. Oh, no, he he talked. No, Kai. If I can corner Kai, then he'll always talk to me. You know, the question it's it's getting him cornered in one area where he can't escape me. You know, and then it's like with it's like with Cedric. I used to just bum rush Cedric, and he would have he would abuse me. That, but I at least would get the interview with him, which was well, good. Why did why didn't uh, what did you ask Kai? We were just talking about I, you know, I don't know what he's up to. And did they have small talk? Did they, they make small talk with him before he asked the, the loaded question? <laughs> you know, you feel like how would you do up here since you're three hundred? Yeah, yeah. I said I told him I said why don't you come back? Well, you never know. You never know. You know, he's still he's still dangling that dangling that carrot for us. He knows we yeah. all want we want that yeah. carrot. Look, if they got Tyson back at the ring, you know, almost sixty years old. I, you know it's a money thing. There's no way Tyson's doing that without making a ridiculous amount of money oh, on that fight. Uh, they, they, he's going to fight Jake Paul. Maybe they could have Kai Green versus like one of the the, the Logan Paul, Jake Paul brothers on stage. They, yeah, they, they gave they gave uh, Kai a big check up front. I mean, Kai Tyson a big check. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. Maybe like if uh, Logan Paul challenges to a pose down for like you know on live you know pay per view for like you know. Guaranteed five million dollars or something like that, you know. Never know. I'm sure Kai would do it. Kai. <laughs> I'd like to see like one of those guys get in the ring with these guys, like you know, like one of these social media guys, but one of the bodybuilders. Who would be the toughest guy? Like who? Would, like if you had, a, if we had to pick a champion from all the bodybuilding world, who would you want to? Who do you think is t tough enough to get up there and fight? The tough one, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, Flex Wheeler was a, was a, was a is very good martial artist. So oh, that's right. That's we right. can get him. We can. I don't know how you know if if he's if we're gonna have an older guy do it, then we could definitely pick uh, Flex to, to fight for yeah. us. You you gotta you gotta find a consultant who knows who's tough. Yeah, you gotta find the, the person who said you can ask like Mel would know. <laughs> right. right, Mel Chancy. Who are the top five toughest people? But most guys don't aren't into fighting. Most bodybuilders, but I mean, I know I, Flex. I know was real. It was a black well, belt. Most so. fighters are not into bodybuilding. It's the most ridiculous. Like, well, they all event. train though, you know. So, 
most most MMA guys, once they're done with doing MMA, they, they all like kind of switch to like a bodybuilding, like kind of lifestyle-ish type thing going on just to look good. I always tell people, I told people that, you know, people ask me, you know, why'd you get into bodybuilding? And, and, and I was just telling the truth. I said, because I wanted to look good. So, I, you know, it was like, you get a date. I mean, that's really, really why you start work. Why does anyone start working out and want to look better, right? To yeah. attract the opposite yeah. sex. But, you know, then it becomes more than that, obviously, because it becomes a sport. It becomes something you want to take to another level. Yeah, and but then, then, Dave, you, you, you should have, I, had I known you, I would have just showed you pictures of Anna Nicole Smith with a 93-year-old husband. Well, you got to make money first. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you, there's one of two routes. You can either make a shitload of money, but then it's like a comedian who's getting laughs because the whole room is, is drunk. You know what I mean? I, I have to, I need to, I it has to be authentic, you know? I got to be authentically uh, validated. I don't want to, I don't want to just have people tell me what I want to hear, you know? So. <laughs> Some people don't care, Krista, you know that. As long as you tell me what you want to hear. You can't handle the truth. Yeah. yeah, but we can. Heavy Muscle Radio. All right, let's let's look ahead. So, I mean, who else is supposed to be in this Arnold uh, Brazil show coming up? Uh, it's going to be loaded. You got uh, Rafael. You got Good Vito. You have uh, um, Carlos Thomas Jr. Oh, that's right. Carlos is down there training. He, yeah, his sponsor there. Yeah, yeah. there you got. Um, um, That's gonna be a good show. Someone else really, a few other people really good. Uh, names. That's gonna be a great names show. People know outside of Carlos Thomas, Good Vito, Rafael. There's more than that. I mean, there's good people in it. It's actually called the Arnold Classic South America, just to let everyone know. Mm. And that's going to be April seventh. Right, is that when it is April seventh? Yeah, it's like three April weeks. April sixth, five, fifth, sixth, and seventh. Yeah. yeah, so that's that's coming up really soon. Yeah, go to musclecontestinternational.com, dot com, get the information over there, and uh, I guess they haven't released the, the competitor list yet, but God forbid they, they release it like they know who's doing it. I don't know why they can't put the list up like like a couple weeks out so we can kind of look at the competitive names and see who's in it. They're gonna have wheel uh, wellness pro, open bodybuilding, classic physique, and wheelchair pro. So, oh, are they having classic? I didn't know that. They are. They are. I, how come Ramon's not doing it? Um, because he's, uh, you know, still recovering. He's, no, he's he's um, he's a Mr. Olympia winner, and meaning that's what he's he's got to set his mind on winning the Olympia. I already told you, Dave. I, I told you last week in the show. I said, I know what Ramon's capable of. Yes, he can beat Bumstead. Um, full stop. He just needs to focus on winning the show. Right, right. He's got to know. That's that's my declaration. I put my. That's my. You know. That's that's not hyperbole, and that's not like wishful thinking. That is, you know, if he puts his mind and his body to winning that show. It's over. Right. He's got all the tools. That's for sure. We know that. Um, no, you, you don't even know the tools he has. Well, you said he only prepped for what? Six weeks? Eight weeks for this past show? Six weeks. Crazy. What a genetic freak he is. That's not, to, that's not to say about, I don't even have to go back and qualify it. He can win it full stop, period. Mm -hmm. Does it frustrate you, like, to know that, and that maybe? Um, of course, of course, frustrates me. But you know what? It's it's if if you you know sometimes the way life deals you cards is the if you look back at it, it would not necessarily in the full giant scope of things been that good. You, Dave, he lost the Arnold by a point. I've already said, I think if I was there, he would have got one more point. If I was there with him, I think he would have got one more point. So he could have won it. Having said that, it's probably not the best precedent for yourself to be successful. If you prepped for a show in six weeks and you won it, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's probably, you know, 
a good lesson to learn and fall off your horse now so that you can get, you know, feel the pain of falling off the horse so that when you refocus for the Olympia, you realize I am all in. And the thing about the Olympia is you have to be all, 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 all in because your competition is all in. Right. You know, that goes for the open, that goes for the classic, that goes for, you know, men's physique. Um, it's, you know, there's a lot of good guys. Yeah. You know no, what I mean? There's just a lot of good guys. You know, you, you could take John De La Rosa and say, what if he gained five pounds for the Olympia? Or you could take Akeem and say, what if his back came in super tight? A lot of that is just like how, how deep all in do you want to be? Right. I, I agree. Um, you, I mean, you agree, but you you're you're different. You you are always all in, right? I mean, there's different le there's different levels of being all in. I if I had his his tool set, I would forget about it. You know, I. But I guess sometimes you know people have distractions in their life, and when maybe things come a little too easy to them, they don't necessarily take it for granted. Maybe, and that's that's the only thing I can say. Uh, did you see this Dennis Yoshi Yoshi guy from Brazil got shot and killed? No. Yeah. Yeah. Who? Dennis uh, Yoshi. Yoshio. He was a social media guy, like influencer guy. Uh, he got shot in uh, Sao Paulo, I believe, and killed. Bodybuilder or just social media guy? No, he's a bodybuilder guy. I, that's why I said I thought maybe you might have heard it because you know, you know, you could deal with all the Brazilian guys. This guy. Yeah, I recognize him. Yeah. Yeah. These pe people saying that um, uh, I stole these glasses from Bob Grushkin. Chris <laughs> sent them to me. The Bobs, they make me much more intelligent. <laughs> I know what his glasses look like, dude. I should have his glasses instead of his ashtray. Speak, you know who's wearing glasses now, too? Craig Titus. Did you see Craig Titus was up for parole? Oh, you sent me the link. You sent me yeah. the link. Did you watch that? Did, did he get the parole? No, no. What? Ha so what? What oh, John a hey, little, little pause. You sent it yeah. to me. I flipped through it, flipped through it, flipped through it. And I thought you he sent it. it to me and you said he got it because when I was watching it, I said well, he should not get it. Right. Well, that was the title of it that he got it. But because I think it was just to get people to watch it. But I guess, you know, first of all, he has multiple charges. So he was going up for the, I guess, the, the murder, whatever he accepted the responsibility charge. And he, he had to wait 18 years to get that. And so this was his first parole. So even if he was paroled on this one, he still would have had to start the arson charge still. So he he has charges that are running concurrently, so right in order. So they're not running at the same time as each other. They're running one after the other. So you have to, after you do one charge, you got to do the next one. You know. So he he wasn't getting out of jail no matter what. But this was the this is the long one. This one can, this is the 18 to 36 year one. So he definitely wanted to get out of this one. And of course, did he seem remorseful to you at all? It doesn't matter. There was a. It was there any? No, he did not. No, he it, didn't at all. Right? No, it doesn't matter. He he wasn't. And you know, even I thought that God, even if you weren't and don't know how to be, right. You would fake. think that you fake. could fake it. He so can't was, fake it. That's what stuck out to you? I just felt it was I, – I, I'm sure the judge felt that too. It was just he did all the coursework and he did all the – he seems to have been a pretty good – Who cares? Everyone does the coursework. Yeah. I'm saying he seems to have – The, the non-being remorse like struck me. Right. Yeah. Well, she was asking him about what you know what he felt about it. And I didn't. You think the guy would have at least like shed a tear, you know? Well, even more so than, uh, or equally so, or just surprisingly so, of not being remorseful. There was yeah. a part, and I didn't listen to it in detail. You know, I was just driving and listening to it. Um, and uh, there was a part where he said it wasn't. It was like. It was a justification where he said it, it, it was not my intention right. to go there. And I thought, like, wow. <laughs> well, so, he also said, again. Does that make sense to you? Like, if oh, yeah, no, I, I picked that. But also when she asked him, you know, why did you, you know, duct tape the, the, the body and burn it, you know? And, and he's like, well, I, you know, 
I called my friends and they and they tell me that this is what we should do. <laughs> She's like, I don't think they're your friends if that's what they told you to do, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it was it was it was tough for me to watch or yeah. listen to and watch. I, I mean, I like I was driving and had up my, yeah. so I was watching some of it, but like the non remorsefulness of it and the the idea that like he was parsing the idea of he should get out of jail because he didn't have the intention right. to kill this girl. And you know what? I don't think most people who kill people say, I'm going over to Palumbo's house and I'm going to kill him. Right, right, right. right. The, 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 the point is, you never did have the intention. And when you went over to Dave, you felt like killing him. And Dave might have given you 3,000 reasons in the last three years where you want to kill him. But you have to have some guardrails right. to be able to, like, at a minimum, just, like, leave and say, Dave's an idiot. Well, he, yeah, he, I mean, he, he, the I, only thing, the only thing I got gathered from watching this, and you guys can watch it, I put the the, the YouTube, I'm playing it right now, but the, the only I gathered was he actually told what happened, and I'm assuming it's, it's accurate, which was that his, you know, Kelly and, and, and that, and Melissa were arguing with each other. He left, he came back, they were still arguing, and somehow he did, he wound up killing her, and, and then they try to, you know, hide the body, and, 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 so he did admit that he was the one who killed her. So, no one, we really didn't know what happened until this very moment where he kind of told the story. So if you want to know what happened, it seems like Craig was, was telling the truth about what happened in, in that sense. Well, Dave, that and back up and just the idea, if you back way up at the beginning, you know, it, it's the, the minute I hear the word like, you know, he was a partier and on drugs. And, you know, what the difference between... The, the problem, frankly, with recreational drugs is when I'm so pissed at Dave Palumbo for screwing me for three three years that when I go over his house, you know what, instead of walking away, uh, <coughs> you know, you, you have no ability to control your, 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 your demons and you put a bullet in Dave Palumbo's chest. Yeah. You know, right. the drugs didn't make, make you do it but they help facilitate not having control over things that you do. Yeah. I, I probably, think, you know, it, you know, I'm sure he would, you know, he brought it up. To, well, would he, would he, would he, he obviously as, a, as a, as an excuse, right. as yeah. a way to say, and it is, but still you're doing it. Yeah. I, I think what he also, you know, was, you know, he said he was on, I guess, what, Percocet, Oxys, and he was taking some cocaine. <clears throat> but at the end of the day, you know, we know Craig. Craig was very arrogant. He thought he was going to, you know, kill her and get away with it, you know. And I don't think, from what Romano, Romano had interviewed the uh, prosecutor who prosecuted all these, and, and he said that they're never, you know, they were going to go for the death penalty, but they were afraid that because there were so many different stories that they, that they wouldn't be able to prove that, you know, and get the death penalty. That, so they went for this option, which is basically that will keep him in jail for life because they ran his sentences, you know, one after the other. So yeah. even if he eventually gets paroled on this one, which it doesn't seem likely they're going to give him parole anytime soon, he still has another one to serve. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's, it, you know, the, the, the arson one. So, you know, he's not getting out anytime soon. And, you know, and he better learn how to cry because, you know what, to me, I wasn't convinced that he had any remorse whatsoever for what he did. No, I mean, he should have been bawling. He should have been bawling. He should have been practicing his, his crying, you know, before this. It was, it was stunning when to hear like, well, I get the paperwork right here that I took this course and that course. Like, yeah, he's looking for it right now. You can see on the, on the thing. So. He's talking like a lawyer, not as a like a person who's right. has, has any like emotional. No. I mean, maybe he buried that emotional. Maybe it's a survival technique in jail. He he buried all his emotions. Yeah, well, this when you go for parole, that's the time to let all your emotions out because yeah. <laughs> because you're trying to get some sympathy from the judge. You're not you're not going in there trying to like prove anything because you know you're guilty. You're trying to get sympathy so that they say, okay, you know what, this guy has remorse. He did the coursework. He's been a model citizen. Let's let him out, you know? Yeah. So, well, 
back to the drawing board for Craig again. Couldn't have happened to, uh, you know, whatever. He doesn't deserve it. From what I saw, I, I wouldn't have given him parole either. So. Yeah. Neither would I. So, well, great weekend, guys. Good job, Arnold Classic people, on running that Arnold Classic UK. It was brilliantly done. Uh, the live stream was really good. I'm looking forward to Arnold Classic Brazil. I know Tamer and his crew down Muscle Contest are going to do a great job down there. We have a great lineup coming up for that, too. So I think we get a couple weeks off, and then we'll be down there in Brazil covering that show as well. And uh, I think we have a lot of cool storylines now going into the Olympia 2024. I think they're still they're going to develop, and you know I think it's going to be an unbelievable show. And uh, you know Hardy's established himself as you know like he wants you know in a good way vengeance. Yeah. You know yeah. because he was close. You know he's he was he was the champion after you know trying trying trying. That's always a good story. Wins it one year, loses it the next. Yeah. Um, Comes back, not only does the Arnold Ohio, but this show, two in a row, ups his condition to at least, I thought he looked great here, but two weeks ago to like blazing, blazing, blazing yeah. his all time best. And, uh, you know, he's dangerous. Yeah, I think Derek should be worried. I think Derek, I love Derek's physique. I think Derek's young still, he's making improvements. But he's going to have to make a much different look, I think, from last year. If he's going to, especially in the midsection, if he's going to stand next to a hottie choping with that kind of crazy condition. You know what? The, the funny thing is, Dave, is hottie strikes me as a type who wanted to come back after the Olympia and just drop the hammer and say, "Don't think, don't. I'm not waiting the year. Vengeance." Right. I am not waiting the year for the scuttlebutt, like, oh, look at this guy could win and, you know, Hottie could drop the third or anything like that. So he was motivated. He was motivated to prove himself by the loss, right? Yep. And now with the wins, he's probably motivated to show people that he can even improve on this. Yeah. And he's got, and he's got the, he's <laughs> got a, He's got a nice fat bank account now also to make him feel yeah. very good himself over the next eight months until the Olympia comes up. So yeah. great job, Hottie Chopin. Good good, uh, good decision to do both those Arnolds. You laid it on the line, but you, you came out ahead. And uh, you know what? We got we to gotta, we gotta applaud him for that. He did a great job. All right. As we say every week, Chris, we're running out of time here with Heavy Muscle Radio. The truth hurts. It sure does. We'll see you again next week, guys. Thanks for joining us live.